So the development team at Blackmagic have been hard at it again. We've got a new release of DaVinci Resolve, full of exciting new features. There's tons of stuff in the Fairlight page, which looks interesting. We've got new stuff in the Edit page, and this particular new effect in the Color page I really could have done with last week. This is a brand new sky replacement tool. So let's go and take a look. So we're in the color page and I've got this set to full screen mode using shift and F. So we get this full screen view and I can just play that through. We've got a little bit of movement on this shot of Brighton Pavilion, but as you can see, that sky is about as dull as it possibly could get. So we're gonna do a sky replacement. And one way to do that is to key out the sky and we're gonna get a bit of stock footage and put it behind. So let's have a look at that. If I just take off this here, which is our disable effects. So up there is disable effects. And you can see I've done that already. I've just superimposed a sky on the back and keyed out the original sky, which is really easy to do. And that looks great. We could tweak the sky and get it looking a little bit better. But if I move on to my next shot here, we've got another sky on there. So this is going to be another bit of stock footage, but this sky has actually been generated by DaVinci Resolve and not even in the Fusion page. This has been done in the color page using one of the new open effects called Sky Replacement. So let's have a look at this. So there's two different ways to apply the Sky Replacement effect. You can either just drag and drop it straight onto a single node, or you can apply it to an effects node and that gives you extra input. So you could plug in, for example, if you've got some third party footage, sky that you want to use, you want to blend that in a little bit, that would allow you to do that. So I'm gonna show you both ways. So let's start off with a single node. I'm gonna to go to my effects. I'm gonna drag my sky replacement effects and drop it on and nothing actually happens. I'm gonna go through all these tools in a moment, but nothing's actually happening. And that's because you need to tell the sky replacement effect what is actually sky. So Easiest way to do that is probably just to key the sky. You could use a power window if you wanted to. You might have an external mat that you could use, or you could even use the magic mask. So let's do the magic mask first, and I'll show you keying in a minute. So I'm gonna make sure I'm in object mask, not people, and I'm just gonna literally sample this area here. And there we go. We can refine that and get that looking good. So that's just using the magic mask. And then what we do, if we go over to the sky replacement tool itself and just bring in opacity, you'll see that we start introducing our own sky. And because we're just on this single node, what we can then do is go into our key here and go to our key output, and we can actually blend back the amount of sky that we've done back with the original. So that might give you a more natural, pleasing look. So let's reset that, and I'm gonna show you how to do that using an effects node. So what we have to do is take our sky replacement effect and just drag it into an empty part of your node graph. And this creates a different type of node called an effects node. And you see here that you've got different inputs. So we need to connect this up. So at the minute we've got our source, which is feeding into our first node. Our RGB out is going to our output. And if we just break this chain, so if you go anywhere past halfway, it goes blue. You can deselect that. And we're now gonna link our first node into our second node, our sky replacement. And we're gonna feed the sky replacement output to the master output. And these are now connected up. So now we have to tell the sky replacement node where the sky is. And to do that, we're gonna use a qualifier on node one. So I'm in my qualifier tool and we're gonna use the 3D keyer. And I'm just gonna start keying out the sky. Now this is a pretty easy sky to key. I'm just gonna put my highlight tool on. And now what I'm doing, I've done an initial selection. I'm just gonna press the picker add tool and just see how good we can get this. So obviously the better the key I get here, the better results we're gonna get. So I'm just gonna keep pulling down here. I'm just trying to get this as clean as I possibly can. This is not an exercise to show you how the key works. This is really about the sky replacement, but that is a pretty good key. So once we're happy with our key, switch the highlight tool off. And all we've got to do now is feed that key into the sky replacement node. Now, the nice thing with having the key on node number one is that after, when I've used my sky replacement tool, I can actually use my key output here to actually mix the amount of the original sky that I want mixed with the new sky that we're gonna make. So now we're gonna go into the sky replacement tool itself and we can have a look at all the settings that we've got. And by pressing shift and F, we get this really nice large mode and I can see all of my controls down here really easily. Okay, so let's get this going. Now the first thing we've got here is refining of our mask. So let's have a look at the mask that we've got and we can refine this. So this is black levels here. This is the same as the sort of black and white finesse tools that you have in the Kia. And we can just reduce that edge a little bit. But this is probably easier to do when you can actually see the sky. So I'm gonna take that off for a minute. And the reason we've got no sky here at the minute is because our sky opacity is set to zero. So let's bring up the sky opacity. 
and there is our sky. So this has been generated by DaVinci Resolve. So if you want to have a look at it without the pavilion in front of it, we can just press this button here and there's our sky. It looks pretty plain at the minute. That's a, so we can change the color, we can change the softness and all that sort of stuff, the height of it. But when we come down here and start adding clouds, this is where things start getting fun. So the cloud opacity is currently set to zero. Let's just add that and you can see that now we are getting a serious looking sky. So we can change the scale, we can change the shape, we can change the tilt, the detail. So detail is quite interesting. Go from that to that. So this is brilliant. We're literally generating exactly the sky that we want. The amount of fill, the kind of contrast. This is really nice as well. Okay, so we don't we'd want something quite subtle. And we've got cloud time here. So we can actually animate this by using keyframes. So you could animate it over time so that it moves. Uh, the hotspot brightness is a little bit I don't know, that's not really going to come into my sky too much. So let's switch off the sky preview and you see already that looks much better than the stock footage because we've actually designed the sky to match the foreground. We've even got controls for foreground down here so we can come down here and start adjusting. Just click on there. We can adjust temperature and tint and all those sort of things in here. So obviously I would normally do that in the color grade to be honest but the tools are there for you. Now one thing that this is doing is it's moving. So we've got a little pan on this shot. So if I go to the match motion here what we can actually do is track the, either the foreground, we can keyframe ourselves, we can track the original sky or we can use the effects tracker. So what I'm going to do is track the foreground. I'm literally going to press track foreground. It's going to analyze the image and the sky is now moving with the image. Now obviously that is introducing a bit of blanking on the edge so what we've got to do now is press the auto size and that's done. And I've just seen here that you can flip that horizontally as well if you want to. And then down here we've got the sky integration so we can just put a little bit more defocus on that maybe. That's a little bit much and I can preview that whole sky and I can also preview the original sky before I did this treatment here and I'll tell you what I'm going to do. I'm going to take that off. I want to see it as a full composition and I'm just going to pull that defocus back a little bit. It's a little bit strong there. So we didn't cover any color management here. If color management is something you struggle with and you want a really easy explanation of how it works, check out this video here. Look after yourselves and I'll see you in the next episode.